should we expect any more baby announcements on Instagram in the future? We, we have, well, they didn't expect to have the ones that we got now, so I, mean, I don't know. You guys started following Haim on Instagram. Uh -huh. And my dream is for this trio of sisters to collaborate with you guys, a trio of brothers. We have discussed Haim soon. After 30 years, what does still keep you guys challenged and inspired in doing this? Does it still feel like it did? Yeah. It does. You mean besides each other? <laughs> Your new project, Against the World, is coming out soon. It's being released every month, a new song. What kind of makes this album special? Well, I mean, lots of things. I mean, one of the, this whole idea of releasing music in pieces, it, I mean, it goes back almost a decade. We've been independent for a long time, and so we're able to sort of think a little differently about how we release things because we get together and we say, hey, what do we want to try? You can kind of dismantle what it means to put out a record. And we thought, man, it's it's so it'd be so nice to have this more of that sense of a journey where music yeah. is continuing to happen. There's another thing, you know, we've been a band a long time. This is our seventh studio album. I think and our it's nine thousandth other album. Yeah, yeah, we've made a lot of albums. <laughs> and I think it's more and more important that every song is adding to that catalog and saying something important. You want to put the spotlight on it for a minute. And this allows us to say, Here's the first song and, and look at it and live with it and love on it and then move to the next. We just released a song called Anna Lee and it's, you know, it's very much, it feels like, hey, we're going on a journey. It's, it's very organic. It's, uh, it's definitely very welcoming. It's, you know, upbeat. As the songs go on, you know, they get richer, they get a little heavier, different flavors. And it is going to be cool to see, just to see what it's like to have people slowly see this album build, like right in front of uh, your eyes. So be a new experience. What yeah. made it the right song to come out first to really launch this project? Mm -hmm. yeah. So Annalie is, a, is an interesting song for this project because I think we felt like it was very inviting. It also, we've done a lot of different sounds on our records. This is maybe something we've never showed about ourselves. I mean, sleeping with my voice, which is something it's true, unique yeah. to our singles. I noticed um, that in the video. I was like, so much Zach <laughs> happening right now. <laughs> Maybe too much Zach. I <laughs> Zach attack. We, you know, I, I, I really the like way. the message of the song. I think um, yeah, you know, the world has felt a really kind of intense and at odds with each other. Yeah. And this song is all about grace. So it's about the name, Anna Lee, which means uh, God's grace. How does the song compare to the rest of the album? What's kind of the vibe? The rest of the album sounds nothing like Anna Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it, so right. It's, I mean, it really is. Um, it, it does in its own way. Because you should what? say, you should say most of the songs don't sound like each other. So mm. Anna Lee is very rootsy. It's, it has those Paul Simon influences. It's rhythmic. It's organic and rhythmic. It feels almost like a train. Kind of the drums pushing you along. Uh, the next song is called Don't Ever Change. Um, so that'll come out in June. And it's very like power pop, garage rock. Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick plays on it. Yeah goes somewhere completely different. Yeah. Uh, it looks different, it sounds different. Yeah, yeah. the third song that we're uh, planning to release is called Only Love, and uh, it's very gospel and very, like... It's kind of rootsy, a little bit like Annalie, but in a very different way. As people yeah. discover these songs, I think you'll see that a lot of these songs touch on taking on challenges, kind of coming through uh, hardships and looking for hope through, you know, sort of through that darkness. And, and um, musically, you see those you know, their full thoughts. I think something else that's gonna be fun are all the live shows that you guys announced. You're gonna yeah. be playing this album along with a classic album. Yep. Is it still fun to play the older stuff? Is it still fun to play Where's the Love, Mbop? Yeah, it's crazy. We look forward to that because it, it gets, gives you this chance to revisit where you come from. Is it still fun? Absolutely. I mean, we have a great job. <laughs> Last time I checked playing music, uh, and, and having people that really love what you do in the room with you. That, that does not suck. You guys also have a 2022 world tour planned. How will yeah, it so feel to play music live again? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> this We've is gonna forgotten be a new, how to play. It's going to be a new experience. Music. It's like learning to shake people's hands again. I'm gonna, I've, I've been practicing hugging. Just to try and remember <laughs> what that feels like. Whenever we you know, hug each other again, yeah. I, I think, I just like to put it out there now, 
free hugs festival guys Come yes, on. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, so spring of 2022 we'll, we'll start the world tour and that just honestly it, it, it probably feels like a kid thinking about christmas you know for us that's what we live for traveling okay. around meeting people this this ability to create those intangibles that happen when strangers get in a room and sing along together you know yeah. th there's something i think really important about that just for the soul of the world absolutely uh, to, to see each other together sharing these moments um and so we're, we're excited we'll be you know australia europe us all uh, south latin, latin america <laughs> there was a there was <laughs> signal broke up a little between the three of you you have 15 children which yes. is incredible yes. truly two how is, babies <laughs> how has fatherhood influenced the type of music that you guys are making? How did fatherhood not influence? Yeah, that, that's probably fair. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think uh, inevitably your experiences definitely get into the way you write songs and your conclusions and these, these mini stories uh, that we write, that we call songs. I think the other thing is it becomes more important that idea of a little bit, what's the legacy you're leaving? As you know, you're leaving yeah. that to your kids and you're talking to your kids through the art you make. And so it just becomes just that much more important that you're kind of speaking from the heart. Uh, but I, I do agree that, that you, you start kind of strongly considering what kind of legacy you're you're leaving yeah. not just not just to your fans, not just to the world, but but to your kid. Our kids are starting to get old enough that they're coming out on the road solo, like my son Shepard coming out and hanging out for a couple of weeks on the road and going to places and experiencing mm -hmm. those things. Now you're doing it as a dad, you know, and, and you have the memory of being the kid That's and right. it flips everything on its head. I think I'm actually really just trying way. to train a guitar tech so I don't have to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like women always get asked this, so I'm going to ask you guys this. Yeah. How do you find the time to balance the recording, the touring, the family life, and the home life, and all of that? It's a great question, and it's so true that the, the balance is almost impossible to find. I'm grateful that we started so young because hmm. as we've all begun to have bigger and bigger families, you can't prioritize the music over your kids and the legacy that, that you have to leave with them of being a dad. And so as you go into making music, you really need to rely more on instinct and hope that over the years that you've been playing, you've developed enough instinct to work faster and to speak clearer. Because you really do have to put them as the number one thing. They're a precious commodity. <laughs> yeah, I think too, I mean, part of the great training of being on the road and doing what we've done is, you know, chaos is normal. normal. <laughs> <laughs> and so having kids, having families, having big different relationships, yeah. different different yeah. ages. I mean, it's never all perfectly lined up. But you're trying and you you know, you you first of all, we should not skip over you marry amazing women. Oh my gosh. And they gosh. are incredible. Like if, if that wasn't if you didn't have that that trust and that confidence. Actually, that's really where it's a partnership, <laughs> then no way you could be, you know, yeah. here. But I think it's important to not to not underplay being a dad and being a, a father. Like I think our whole culture I mean, the truth is, you know, there's so much, you know, lack of really celebrating women in our, you know, in society. Like women are the most incredible things. They tie us all together. But as as dads, too, we we need to. I think also it's important to say how important being a dad. And so you're just trying to you're trying to be the example you want for them to see. I mean, Taylor, you have seven kids. Zach, you have five. Isaac, three. Should we expect any more baby announcements? on Instagram. Well, they didn't expect none that to I have the ones we've got now, so I, mean, I don't know. You know, we're not this, this, anything. This, my wife looked at me the other day, she said, I think I'm done. <laughs> so <laughs> like, that is the limit. Yeah. 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 We've all been incredibly blessed with amazing kids and, and amazing families. So I've always taken it one at a time. That led us to seven. So I'm just going to hold. <laughs> my youngest is seven years old so i don't i don't i don't think we're starting over anytime soon yeah you're thinking okay. the bunny uh, i'm thinking of getting uh, make, uh, there's a high likelihood of another dog taylor and zach i mean you guys do have newborns at home quincy maybelline are you guys sleeping right now how is that going no 
I'm not really sleeping. <laughs> we also have a we also have a two year old. So. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, the two year old probably more like a double barrel. Oh yeah, yeah, I woke up today with like he had a nunchuck. That was really <laughs> she was like, "Hey, like, that's <laughs> like, cool. Please don't use that." That way, I, I will say yeah. I I did forget how much you do start over with every child, and that's probably the beauty of parent amnesia. You love them so much that you go, "Let's do it again," and then you go, "Wow, this is hard." Why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's awesome. Not a whole lot of sleep but my wife uh, gives me some grace in the evenings, but usually hands them to me in the morning and says, wake up, go. I did notice though, you guys started following Haim on Instagram. Uh -huh. And my dream is for this trio of sisters to collaborate with you guys, a trio of brothers and make Love that magic, idea. magic. Have you ever talked to them about this? We actually have, we have, we have discussed Haim soon. <laughs> and, That's a perfect name. You know, yeah, the project actually, if I remember correctly, Esty was the one who texted that particular. So Esty and I have the same birthday. Ah, yeah. ah. And so every when we have a birthday, a lot of times they'll be like, "Hey, happy birthday!" And um, actually, the interesting thing about them and us is that when you put the sisters and the brothers together in the combo of kind of primary instrument, it, it makes a works. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you don't have a bass player. Yeah. Piano, drums. Exactly. Yeah. Gosh, it, so, it so when works. is this? Collaborate? We haven't really thought about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously you guys have talked about this at length. You all have wonderful hair. When could we expect this song? Like, is this a serious conversation or more of like a, a joke? It is, it is more germinating idea that has been thrown around between us. We've hung out a few times and they're super, super fun. Great. We love their stuff. Yeah. And they've been very complimentary about us over the years. So I think the concept makes, it's like, yes, this would be kind of ridiculous, but there is no concrete, no. there's no concrete plan. Yeah. Just, just that kind of what would happen? Isaac, I think you touched on this a little bit ago, but Hansen formed in 1992. Next year marks 30 years, which is insane. And now I feel very old. <laughs> Sorry to do that to you. Yeah, yeah I mean, gosh. You're so young. No, you're, you're... <laughs> what, what will you guys do to celebrate? Are you talking about doing something special? I think that we've got a couple crazy ideas <laughs> up our sleeves and we're trying to decide which one or ones to do. More than anything, we want to connect. We just want to be connecting with those that have mm. stuck with us, followed us, come to shows. After 30 years, what does still keep you guys challenged and inspired in doing this? Does it still feel like it did? It does. You mean besides each other? It doesn't feel the same. It feels different. It feels, in some cases, certain things that are really important. We're really important, are less important. New things are important. But I do know for, I know for everybody, like getting to do music, getting to write songs and share is like, you realize more than ever just how rare and amazing that is, mm. that, that we've been able to do it. Your kids, a lot of them are the ages that you were when you did get into this industry. Do you guys see yourselves in them? What is that like for you? I've seen myself in them more and more <laughs> in a weird way. Especially my oldest son who started playing guitar. <laughs> I, I'm definitely seeing, uh, I'm seeing light bulbs go off and yeah. seeing like yeah. the processes that, that they, I, I'm imagining, uh, you know, remembering through them what those seasons were like. To that point too, I, I've been trying my best to, to um, harness my inner uh, Diana Hansen, who's that's, that's our that's mom. Dangerous. That's dangerous. Yeah. That's our mom. <laughs> because she was a real go-getter for us when we were first starting out. And I think that's the biggest thing. Sure. Giving them the opportunities to really test themselves uh, and, and, and see where it goes. Are they dating yet? <laughs> <laughs> we're trying that's to get not. You guys are like... Cousins dating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know we're Whoa. Oklahoma. Don't, what are you trying to say? In Arkansas. Well, <laughs> I'm just wondering, Taylor, because your oldest is 18. I think you were 20 when you got married or had your first child. So yeah, it, could you be grandfather soon? It's, it's crossed my mind. That's why we're happy for the pandemic. <laughs> you're, like, you're not leaving. Ever. You're saying oh no, this you're... pandemic's going for at least three more years. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I it's... especially for yeah, yeah, especially your daughter, my sixteen year old right? daughter who is like she's like ready to go, you know, from, from ten, she's like, Where are the keys? No, you can't drive. <laughs> um, so I have two that can drive yeah, you know, eighteen and sixteen. Yeah, there's things are brewing and they're they're definitely at that time where that's becoming a reality. Um You've had the talk. You know, they, there's lots there's there's <laughs> awareness. <laughs> I love that Zach eye. is loving this so much. Oh, I'm loving it the most. Oh, it's, it's great to just sit here and not have to say anything. <laughs> yeah. just, I'm definitely in that moment and it's cool. Going back to the whole 30 year career thing, 
none of you guys, I mean, Taylor, you did do tinted windows, but none of you guys ever really embarked on a solo career like Nick Jonas, perhaps. <laughs> right, right. Why was that? Was that ever a conversation between the three of you? Everything's in, really, in, it takes insanity. a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> this takes a lot of time. I mean, uh, there, I mean, honestly, for uh, several things, I mean, for one, there was such a, there was a really desire to solidify being this group, you know, because groups are so, especially when we, were, when we first came out, there was such a desire to depict it as super pop and maybe this is manufactured because it's, we were so young. I think we all felt really strongly about, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be this band, it's gonna sort of beat the odds and, you know, yeah. have this longevity and and really- And, man, stick, it to get, and stick together. Huh? Yeah, stay together. Yeah. I feel like I'm supposed to announce something right now, you know, like- I'm, I'm, I'm going, <laughs> I'm running for president. <laughs> Me? And the rock. Yeah. That, that would be, be what a bill that would be to vote for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be. Yeah. I've got the hair, he's got the muscles. 